Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for the AAT Trade Federation battle tank uh, here. This is for the secret project uh, on the channel. So I'm taking uh, the droid models from Star Wars Legion and then bring them over into 40k uh, to use as a tower auxiliary at army. I'm going to do a full 2k list. It's pretty much done. It's just the tanks that I have left to do. So this tutorial here is going to be a step-by-step -step guide uh, as to how to paint the tank. Uh, exactly as you see here, this is one of the ones that I've finished. Uh, and so in this guide, I'm going to show you the whole thing from start to finish, uh, how to achieve the same results. So I, I'm really happy how this one's come out. The process is actually pretty quick. Uh, and there's going to be a number of hints and tips just to really accelerate the speed of uh, the way you can put this together. Uh, now, this is for Star Wars Legion, but you can use the techniques that I show you here and apply it to any of the 40k factions. Astro Astro Militari Army, for example. Uh, I think the tanks will look particularly good painted up uh, with this kind of colour scheme. So uh, feel free to copy this for your own Star Wars Legion stuff, or you can uh, easily incorporate it uh, into your painting of a 40k army. I guess you could use it to paint up a tower force. You know, you could use this guy and just paint up a hammerhead using the same uh, process that you see here. I've tried my best, uh, without making things too complicated, to try and match the colour scheme that you see in the film. Uh, for these, so I mean, here's some of the artwork. If I bring this up closer, like so. Now the shading and the colours are quite strong on this piece of artwork. Uh, I guess because it's like a 2D piece, so they have to go strong on the shading and so on. Uh, but hopefully you can see that there is a pretty good match up between those two, without going too over the top. So I'm happy enough with how that's come out. The idea of this video is just to guide you through step by step from start to finish. How to achieve the same results that you see on the screen. So there's one area that I, I'm not going to cover in this video and I'm going to do a walkthrough and that's the base. I'd, so I swapped out the Star Wars base that came with it in the Star Wars Legion box. I'd, I went onto eBay and bought I'd, a large sort of Games Workshop equivalent base just there. I kept the stand though that comes with the kit and just super glued that on uh, to the round base here. Just this, this uh, force looks correctly based for Warhammer 40,000 went for a nice wide base here it's not as wide as the one you get for Star Wars Legion uh, but it's wide enough and it'll hold the tank in place quite nicely and just slots in just underneath so I'll just bring this in so you can see it's like a parched grass kind of effect I'm going to walk you through that uh, it's very straightforward uh, and a walkthrough guide uh, it will be fine just to show you how to do the basing so briefly how to do this uh, by the base stick the stand on uh, and then for the basing itself i'm using some of the newer paints and from games workshop here so this is uh, technical i'm getting dust so it's like a paint uh, but it also comes with like a sand effect mixed in with it as well uh, so that's been with an old brush uh, put onto the uh, the base here so just blotched all the way around just applied quite roughly onto the surface and then you can see here there's some extra stones and larger pieces. Once that's all been applied across the whole thing, I then drop in uh, some small stones and scatter. So I've got a box here. These are stones that I found at the beach. Some very fine stuff here without shells in it. And there's some larger pieces in there as well. So those are simply just picked up and then dropped into the uh, technical paint as it was drying. Then leave all that to dry and that just holds all the stones in place, it's, like, it's almost like a glue, it holds it in nicely for you and you also get that sandy textured finish across the whole base and the, the appropriate colour for you as well, so it's a lot of work done. Once that's entirely dry, you must leave it to completely dry and then give it a coat of Agrax Earthshade, so it's a wash, that just shades the whole thing in for you, links it all nicely and just does all the shading work on that. One, again, once that's entirely dry, the next stage is to highlight over the top uh, and that is still legion drab so just a dry brush over the top of the whole thing for that that does all the shading all the highlighting all the stones and so on uh, like you see just there then to finish off uh, is the flock that i've used so i've got a mixture here i've got two different shades of flock a parched brown kind of color and then one that's parched with a little bit more life and lightness to it so, these two, I've kept them in separate tubs. 
There's no real particular name for these. I found them on eBay, so just choose the shades that you want. I've gone for two tones of shade here, just to make the base look as realistic as possible. And that's the other shade there. So, just looking at the camera, that's pretty a pretty good match. So you can get descriptions like, and I've got my mine from different places on eBay, uh, but it'd be like dead grass, parched grass, dry grass, uh, those kind of colors you're looking for. Uh, and the grain on that, I believe, is six millimeters. So you can get different lengths. So I didn't want it too long, didn't want it too short. So six millimeter uh, flock. You can find that on eBay or your hobby store. All different shades available. Because I know if I go in a few years' time, go to buy another set of this, the shade will be slightly different. Uh, there's different companies selling flock, and it just rotates around. So that's those two. And then also using tufts. And again, I went for two different shades that when they're next to each other, they just liven the base up quite nicely. So again, there's like a, a parched kind of shade, but there's some green to it. And then there's a full on sort of dead grass with not much green in it at all. And those two I run. And those are just grass tufts. Again, you can find those uh, on eBay. So those, I just use PVA glue. And I take out the grass tufts first. I dip them into the glue and then just plant them onto the base. I didn't plant many because this base is pretty much covered up by the model, so I haven't gone too fussy on the tough, save them for other uh, models. And then the two uh, shades uh, of the grass there, as well as just applied to a rough brush and allowed to dry. The final finishing part to the base uh, is the trim. And that's like a nice, rich, darker kind of brown colour. You can choose any colour you want. Uh, Catachan Flesh. I'm using there for that trim, two coats of that uh, shades that in nicely. and just gives you a nice clean finish for the edge, but you could use any color you want. You could even use Steel Legion Drab. It's a nice color to finish that off as well. It's another option uh, that you could use. And then I would use a bit of tissue or tape just to cover up the clear base and then just give the whole thing a spray of Munitorum uh, varnish just to seal the whole thing in uh, and just to protect it. A bit and then once it's done that's the basing finish that walk through if you follow that along step by step that'll guide you through the whole process of uh, doing the basing no problem and that process i've just shown you that's actually how i've rebased my entire adeptus mechanicus army as well so the basing you see on them is the exact same process uh, that i show you here uh, in this video so that's basing done uh, so we'll talk about preparation next uh, materials and things that you'll need uh, for painting the aat droid tank so in this video, I'm going to be sharing some techniques just to speed up the process. If you want to get stuck on a project, like move through it, uh, but still get good results. That's the whole point of this video series, just to guide you through. So first of all, with sprays, and they're the key just to speeding uh, the whole thing up here. So as uh, first up, just to finish off, the Munitorum varnish from Games Workshop. Excellent stuff. Then to do the base colours, as you can see here, and we'll, we'll get talking about this a bit later on, use a couple of sprays so first up is desert yellow from army painter it's that kind of color there it's quite dark but that's your darker shade i then use uh, skeleton bone from army painter so it's that kind of color just a bone color and i actually use some corax white as well from games workshop uh, so pure white spray it's a nice fine spray uh, if you've got an airbrush then you're in a great position you can use an airbrush instead uh, but i'm actually going to be spraying directly onto the model uh, here in this video just to show you the effects that you can get okay next so paints that you'll need uh, we've already talked about what you need for the basing so this is optional but you get your technical armageddon dust uh, the trim on the base for catachan flesh uh, the highlight uh, steel legion drab the shading agrax earth shade so that's what you need for the basing all right then some metallic so iron breaker these are all games about shot paints here. Uh, then Stormhost Silver. So Iron Breaker is sort of your medium kind of shade uh, for uh, silver, metallic. And then uh, Stormhost Silver is a lot lighter. Uh, then these next colours are, and these are optional because you can choose what colour you want to use. But if you're going to go by uh, the films, you can see the little gem just there on the targeting equipment um, so the colors that you'll need for that will be the shade which is corn red the mid-tone here will be evil sun scarlet 
and then the highlight troll slayer orange and then for the little dot ceramite white just standard white also going to use a button black at uh, Mornfang brown at uh, shabti bone then rhinox hide explain the use of all these as we go and then get it really getting into uh, the contrast paints here from Gaze Workshop. They really are a good job. Uh, Black Templar, quite a crucial paint for this project. Uh, and then also Skeleton Horde, again, uh, a very crucial uh, paint for uh, this project. So that's pretty much the colours you can need. The gem's optional. You can take those colours out if you don't want to do the red. Uh, but it's a nice touch to add in. It's quite accurate, I think, to the uh, to the films and there's the basing stuff across there but the other colors you're going to need if you're going to try and match this color scheme and again bear in mind you can transfer this color scheme over onto national militarum or tower i mean no problem at all it should work fine and, and still achieve uh, some great results so first step you could spend so much time doing the, like the main body work of the tank I'd, I want to try and do that with sprays and then just do finishing touches straight on top it's so much quicker than just painting layers over the whole of the vehicle and this is where you're going to save tons and tons of time uh, painting this up so you build the model in its entirety looking something like this and i have to say the quality of them they are they're fantastic here they are on, in my opinion on the same level as games workshop uh sculpts so really, really happy with this so do keep the turret separate you can magnetize if you so wish but i'm happy enough just to leave mine loose uh, but everything else is is stuck in position and it shouldn't be a problem uh, for spraying up the vehicle and, and really for this technique to work it does all need to be stuck together uh, and then the turret and so on is all fixed and set in place so for spraying i'm going to try and spray the shade the mid-tone and the highlight just by using sprays and that's just going to springboard catapult you right ahead over this project and save you loads of time uh, so the first color is your shade which will spray first so it's this color here desert yellow it's this darker kind of tone uh, and it's just common sense so where the shading will be is where you spray it's not looking to spray the whole model but where the shading will be so i'm going to spray it into here i'm going to spray the whole underneath the whole back and i'm going to spray up uh, from this direction and catch all the undertones across here it's going to cover over half the tank here Spray into here, spray underneath these weapons, up into this. Then for the turret, I'll spray a bit down in here, a bit in here. I'll spray it generally around there so I catch a little bit of a shade uh, across here. I would say you're going to be covering 70-80% of the model with, with part of this. You'll see it once I've sprayed it. Uh, and I'm definitely going to be spraying all the way underneath here, up the sides, underneath across here as well. So that's just going to be a shade uh, with that color. And I'm just going to spray it around. I'm going to spray it. I'm going to go off camera now, spray this up, bring it back and show you this first stage. All right, so sprayed up with this color. And you can see much of the model's been covered. There's some areas here that haven't quite been covered by it. But I've been trying to work the paint into the cracks across here. And just by the nature of the spray, it's covering. It's going to spray out onto a large area. Working into this, into this, because this is your shade here. You want to make sure you do cover the areas it may, it's going to mean that you're going to end up spraying the majority of the model across here just sprayed solidly underneath i'm pretty much not going to disturb this now it's not going to be seen that's the color that finishes across here that the shading is going to be strong so filled all that in with that color and just worked it in see so some areas on top that haven't really been covered too well that's the more higher highlight just across there so that's how he turns out turret's pretty much the same underneath more solid as well so i would say it's better to overdo it because you want to start doing the highlighting shades the sprays on this and realize you haven't shaded enough uh, and you can always uh, lift the tone of it with uh, the next stages so i would say go generous enough uh, with this shading stage so that's the first color we'll next move on to really the main color here and that's your bone which is going to be your main sort of colour coming through for the tank. So that's this colour here, skeleton bone. So this time, quite strictly, I'm going to be spraying uh, down from this kind of angle. So coming in this way and looking to spray across and just like a xenophore highlight really, just catch uh, the highlights along the top. I'm not really going to spray under here at all. 
I'm going to be careful not to go too heavy uh, to drown out all of the shading that's been done. But I'll have a go of that. Obviously going to be spraying stronger in areas like this. But always, always coming down at that angle. So I'm not, we're never going to spray directly across or from underneath, but always down uh, from on top. Either directly from on top or sort of that kind of angle coming through. But if you go across, you can destroy your highlights. So I'm going to go down in that direction. I'll spray that up here and you'll see the next stage. All right, so hopefully you can see, well, you, you should see that, that big transformation there. Now that's going over that lightly and carefully, just a little bit of a spray at a time, just watching the model, making sure to keep at those angles just there. And the two colors have started to mix just nicely here. I can see the shadings remained underneath quite well. And under here, see the two shades going on, like so. That's just with sprays. I found with these sprays that when they're new and you're using the main part, they should spray just fine. When they start to get towards the end, they can splatter uh, and make a mess a little bit. So just watch out for that. But that's the kind of effect you're looking at. Now I'm going to go for a final extreme touch of colour on this. I'll just show you the turret. Look, there's one shade. Roll it over. And that's the other shade coming. That's, that was just gentle, gentle spray. Just watching it build up. And not going over the top. Now this colour across here is not solid uh, skeleton bone. It is mixed if you look carefully. So I do want that shade coming through just a little bit. Across the back here I did do a little bit of a dash of the bone colour. But not too much. Let's just call that highlight again quite nicely. Sort of came down uh, at this angle. Of that. So there's a final highlight to do, and this is a very, very small finishing touch. That's Corax White. It'll mix in nicely if you just do a little bit. So it's just a little dash across the main area. So the main areas such as the very top of the turret, very carefully, across here, 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 and here, but very, very gently. I uh, just want to be very careful not to do too much. If you do make a big, big mess uh, of this, then just start again. I don't do it too many times to spoil the detail, but because you're lightly spraying, it should be all right. Just start again, shade up, medium tone, highlight, and have another go. Uh, you can work in a batch, ideally, if you can, if you're doing a whole batch of models, uh, then uh, you can work on them just to make sure they're all uniform. If I bring in one that's already been done, that's the final highlight. That's the one at the current stage. So you should see a slight lighter finish on this one, but not too much. So I'll go away and do that now, but it's going to be a very careful light spray. It's a dash of colour uh, across this. The advantage by using the Games Workshop, the Corex White, it's a nice fine spray, this one. So this one's perfect for doing that final finish. All right, so that's that done. I literally sprayed across that with that finer spray of the Corex White about eight, about eight times. About two there, two there, a couple on top, a couple on the turret, and that was it. So I'm talking about a real fine sort of dash of white. You don't want it turning too white, you want to keep that bone colour, but you just want to lift it a little bit. So now, you've got the natural light that's in this room coming from the lighting, but there's also uh, the shading that you've done really starting to kick in here with this model. So it's nicely shaded up. Really, you could go for base colours with this and they'd be battlefield ready, uh, even at this stage. And I mean, the, the model's fantastic, it looks brilliant when it's sprayed up. So, so cool. So that's one of the top reasons why I've gone for this uh, alternate secret project. So you've got extremes going on here. You've gone from that shade to that shade. And that's just by using sprays. You've now finished the main body work for the entire project. It's going to save you tons of time. So you can go straight on to uh, washes and chipping. Uh, immediately just going on to uh, the, sort of the final finishing stages uh, here for this project. So you can save yourself tons of time. If you're painting National Retirement Army, you can paint up all your tanks using this process. And then immediately just go straight on to colours, washes and chipping effect. And so you can get through your vehicles. Instead of those projects being daunting, you can actually work your way through them nice uh, and effectively. All right, so for this next stage, we're going to do a little bit of a cheat. Um, <laughs> my, usual, my usual approach for dark metallics would be to mix uh, black and add silver, make a darker silver. I do it for Space Marines and some of uh, that's parts of their power armor. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to take a different approach. It's just as effective. Uh, but quicker. So you're going to turn to uh, the time savers here. It is Black Templar. And for these dark and metallic areas, if I can maybe show it to you on the finished model. So areas such as this. 
and areas such as this. I'm just going to shade the whole thing uh, with a coat of Black Templar. I'm just going to apply that on. Uh, and then the, the metallic kind of effect that you see is just a final highlight that comes later. So it's a real quick process. Instead of doing metallics, washes, re-highlighting, I'm just going to straight in with the shade and then a final sort of flick highlight just to finish that off. And as you can see, that's effective enough. And really you've just done this, just a two-part process to doing that. So Black Templar. I've got myself sort of a medium kind of size brush here with a pretty healthy tip on it. Um, and I'll show you just on part of the model. So if you can see that, we'll just do this turbine type thing across here. So it goes on strong, but not too strong. So it shades, but still lets some highlight come through, which is perfect. I want to be neat on this one. And just flood that round. Where it's looking a bit thin, I'll just add a bit more Black Templar. Plus going on just nicely, you can see it there. And it's not a solid colour, but we don't want it to be a solid colour. So you'll get a little bit of the, the cream and the brown coming through, but that's fine. Catch a lot of that highlight and turn it metallic later on. A little bit of grimy kind of colour coming through is fine anyway, because it's going to be dust and grime and so on. But I'm painting that up just there, as you can see. It's not much really more to say. What I'll do is I'll go around the whole of the model with this, show you the areas that I've done, just to show you which areas need to be covered of this black template. I'll be immediately getting stuck into uh, colour here, which is really good. Right, so those areas, uh, there's actually not too many. There's these two side turbine type things across here, and then there's this main block uh, here at the back, because they're all filled in. Now there's some grime and the original colour showing through. That's fine by me, because I want sort of dust effects and, and so on. If that's you don't want that showing through too much, you can always do a second coat once that's completely dry uh, of the Black Templar. If you're on an even stronger tone, uh, you can mix uh, some uh, a bad and black with that to make it even stronger. But I'm happy enough with that. It, it blackens it out, but at the same time, just leaves a natural sort of shade uh, coming or natural sort of highlight coming through at the same time. So that's that done. There's other areas on the vehicle that are uh, metallic, but we're going to use a different process, such as the guns that you can see here. Uh, on the turret, the antenna, and parts of the barrel of the gun. So that we're going to go for the sort of the usual process, and that's to take the iron breaker uh, and just to apply that. I think a, a single coat should do it. So the other great thing about this shade is it's nice for other colours uh, for painting them on top. So I'm taking the iron breaker and just going to fill those out. So just checking my reference here, it's this part of the barrel. So just nice and neatly. I would imagine a single coat will do, but you're welcome to do another coat if you so wish. Pigment and coverage on that is pretty good. So, like so. The other process is too dark for this here, uh, the gun barrel is a, is a, sh a lighter metallic. So there's a different process involved for this one. But it's just a case of going, I'm just rotating the turret like so. I'm just paint that up. Not too slow. And then it's the whole of the end of the barrel. All this part. But you're immediately onto an exciting stage. You're not stuck on the, the bodywork, which usually for vehicles takes forever uh, if you're trying to layer up the paints and so on. We've bypassed that. Shaded, base coated and done just within seconds and now immediately onto the final details of the vehicle. And because the majority of the vehicle is going to be these main colours, then uh, you, you've covered most of the vehicle and you get straight onto other sort of smaller details. So that's that done. Uh, I'm going to go further up the barrel, antenna, there's other little details and bits. I'll do the whole of the model here and then point them out to you at uh, the next stage, which is the iron breaker. Okay, so uh, silver work then on the model here will be around the, around the gun. So silver here, 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 and on the tip. Just rotate that so you can see. You've got license really to pick and choose however you want to do it. Um, 
you know you can go for a different combination than what I've gone for and just repeating that across the other side there's a couple of little stud type bits sticking out the front here one and two there's those to pick up and that's pretty much it if you get hung up on details too much size less is more uh, and so just picking up a couple of little areas uh, and then just letting the paintwork uh, cover the rest of the model uh, and if you go by the artwork that's pretty much all there is to pick out then on the gun uh, or the turret the aerials here and that this is just one coat one coat seems fine uh, the rest of the barrel so uh, the tip here the middle bit and there's a little bit across there then also the sight here at the back and at the front and then when it was dry I'd, I then took some corn red and then just filled out that lens solidly uh, one coat of that to fill that out and that's it this has taken me a couple of minutes here and we're getting through the base colors uh, at a good pace we've got two tones going on here the darker turbine and, and engine stack there at the back and then you've got the metallics done we've spotted out uh, the lens as well on that so the vehicle's coming along quite nicely so there's no effect that's been done at this stage just base colors been done and uh, we're sort of progressing quite nicely towards uh, your base colors being done so the next bit i was going to say do the black burn marks across here but it goes across this brown color so we'll do this color next you can see it featured across here and in the middle and it's sort of quite a quite a trademark uh, part of the color scheme here if you're going to go by the book uh, for this color scheme and it's a nice spot color that you could use nicely toned down Fading, shading nicely with the rest of the model uh, and if you're painting say a lean rush you could pick out certain panels or areas on the model uh, with this color pick it out quite nicely so one little tip you can do this is the finished model I left a color reference just to remind me in the future uh, what color this is this isn't a, a out of the pot color uh, it's a mixture of three colors in one so those colors are uh, Mornfang, Mornfang brown so middle sort of shade of brown uh, some shabti bone uh, and then to, to knock the tone right down rhinox hide so i'm going to mix those together and come up with a, a color here right so we've been working on a mix for a color really if the main color is mornfang brown it's just a bit too brown a bit too light uh, and a bit too it just needs to tone down a little bit so you're taking majority mornfang brown maybe sort of 70 80 percent out of that and then transforming it into a a knockdown shade of that by using rhinox hide just to knock it down uh, and then to turn it a bit more pastel kind of color by introducing a bit of a shab t-bone it's just going to try and tip the scale I sort of the, the it's not quite yellow but the uh, the stronger tone of brown uh, with that that's the color i've come up with just there it would be worth using this color uh, to do the whole tank that color so you don't have to remix it if you're doing a batch then it's ideal uh, to do it across all the models if you can. So this is one of the other ones that I'm painting up and that's the shade and the color that's come out. Now, I've toned that down. I'm going to show you how to do that a bit later on, but it's basically some stippled and dry brushed shabti bone just to dust the whole thing up. Just again, just to knock the tone of that brown down. Don't want it too strong. It sort of fade in to the main color of the, main, main color of the, the bodywork here on the tank. But we'll get this foundation color done. That's your reference. See the Mornfang brown is too strong. Rhinox is too dark. No shabti there uh, just to mix in. So I'm going to mix them in uh, together just to produce this different tone that you see just here. And really it's your own interpretation of the colour scheme uh, from the film. If I bring this in and you can see it just there. So it's quite a rich kind of brown kind of colour. And it's there across, I can't really see it there, but it's running across uh, this part across here. So the different artwork I've seen, plus the films have different shades going on. Uh, so it really is down to interpretation on it. But the one thing I don't want, I don't want it being too strong so it starts to stand out too much in the model. So I'll knock it down later on uh, with some stippled and dry brushed to shabti burn. I will come to that a bit later. But that's the colour just there. So if you mix that up by taking, say like five blobs of this. Like so, a small blob of Rhinox, some uh, Shabti Bone, I'll push that to the side and then I'm going to mix this up. 
So that's quite a good colour. I'll bring in the rest of the Shabti, that makes it more pastel in colour. Add a bit of water for the flow. It's too light at the moment. So I'm going to bring in some more Rhinox. It's quite strong though. So I'll just use what's on the brush, plus a bit more. That's knocking that down really nice. We're pretty much matching the colour that we've got there previously. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Maybe say a touch more for Shabti. Just to knock the strength of that brown down. Yeah, look, that's pretty much the colour. Like so. So, ready to go. Got a nice bit mixed up here. Nice flow to it, bit of water. Got a bit more water to what I've mixed up already. And I'm going to go and put this onto the model. So, I think if your brush strokes are really good and you're neat, you could do this in one coat. But I would say to go completely solid, uh, you'd need two coats. But I'm just going to flow the brush down this direction. But that's the colour, you can see it going on. I'm going to work it right into that colour and just run it neatly along here. I do want to be neat at this stage, not any mistakes. Any mistakes that you do make, you can just simply use. Uh, a wet brush just to lift the colour before it settles, before it dries. That's it. You, I think that's giving you, yeah, it's giving you a good idea of the colour uh, just there. I'll probably go for a light watered down second coat on there once it's completely dry just to make that nice and solid. I don't really want brush strokes showing through, so rather that be solid. There's this little area here to do, which I would advise you use a finer brush. I'll use this one here just to get right in the, the fine detail cracks just there. But I'm going to go over the whole of this model. I'm going to use up all this paint across here I'll be painting on the back but you'll see it I'll come back and show you uh, where I've been with this color all right so I had brown done it did take two coats the other definitely want to do two coats the second coat was thinned down lighter watered down uh, but that's the kind of color you're looking at just there it needs to dry completely solid before we do this the stippling and dry brushing effects and indeed we can go on to another part of the model I think my metallics are dry across here uh, so we'll work on that a little bit next but that's the kind of colours you're looking at at this point. So base colours down. Just there. And the model looks something like that. Again, that's kind of battlefield ready if you want to go on at that stage. But there's some, some great fun and some real good techniques just to get this sort of battle one. Uh, nice effects to come out on this. But the next stage, uh, I did say I'd show you where the brown is. So it's this plate here at the front. More in down. Uh, it's these side panels here. Along the back the wings and then there's a little edge for you to follow so I've just run it around there into there on both sides like so I, that's way too when I first painted one of these I just looked at the artwork looked at this way too strong so that needs to be toned down and dusted up uh, to make it fit in a lot better I think that looks way better like so next stage though, we're going to take Agrax Earth Shade and we're going to shade up uh, the uh, metallics across here. So we're going to give that a coat, this Agrax Surf Shade. It's going to knock the tone right down, shade it nicely, but still keep it sort of grimy, dark brown kind of colour. So we'll do that across all the areas that you've painted. Not this darker stuff here, uh, but just the metallics that you've painted. Just give it a coat of that. So this one, yeah, you can see it, that's okay. So shading this in here. I want to be neat, don't want to get this on the, the bodywork, the cream colour. But just go right up to the edge and just shading that all in nicely. Flooding that in across there. It's a nice grimy colour, but dark enough as well to sh shade this in. Work that into there. Hopefully you can see that shading that up quite nicely. So I'll just do that around all the metallics, all the silver that's been done. Not this bit here, the darker stuff, but uh, the silver metallic stuff done. I'm just going to shade that with the Agrax Earth Shade. So that's shaded that up quite nicely, as you can see just there. So we'll just leave that one to dry. Uh, you can also use it to shade the uh, the corn red there on the sighting lens. Fill that in with the Agrax Earth Shade, so that will shade that nicely for you. Also you can see the shading down the aerials. Like so, it really just enriches those quite nicely. So that's that done, uh, that shading process done on the metallic.
Once that shading is done, this is optional, uh, but if you want to uh, tone that silver down a little bit more, you can use some null oil. Uh, that will tone that down as well for you. We'll just strengthen the shading that's going on. It's optional, but uh, I'm just going to add that in just to strength for what's already been done. It's a bit of non oil, non oil just on there, and that'll take a little bit of the rust out and just turn it, drop the tone down it a little bit more. So I'll run around the model and just drop that onto the silver. So there's two shades going there, knock it right down for you, uh, and then just let that dry. All right, so next stage, uh, we are going to try and stipple out and tone down this brown. It's completely dry now. So if I show you the one that I've already done, so that brown's too strong. So what I've done is it's uh, just stippled a dry brush across this just to dust it up and just to knock the strength of that brown down. So it just fits, sits just a lot better on the model. Uh, that's just too striking. It's too strong uh, there. So color we're going to use, we've got an old... Uh, brush here, Games Workshop dry brush, uh, but it's an old one. Um, I'm not looking to protect this too much here because this is more for sort of stabbing and sort of scrubbing with the brush. So it's an old one. I'm going to take some shabty bone on the end here, and then I'm going to uh, work the paint into the bristles, and then try to run run the paint out of the bristles as well. A bit of old tissue here just to absorb because I want to go over the top on this one. And then it's a case of stippling on here. So I'm scrubbing the brush in different directions and sort of working the paint into this brown and it's knocking the tone of it down. And I'll go for a natural kind of look, so I'm sort of stabbing and scrubbing with it here. I want it to look nice and random. That's already knocked the tone of that down quite nicely. Pretty good. Brush has got very, very dry now, so I'm going to pick up a bit more pigment. But I don't want to go over the top. Which is so easy to do. But I think you're starting to see that on camera the way that's dusting up quite nicely. I'm just going to work it along. Like so, maybe you can see the difference between the two. So factory fresh and too strong, and then just stippled and toned down uh, there with their shabby bone. So that's the process. I'm not using very much paint at all. Really working with the bristles. So there's no real love given to this brush here. It's, 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 it's nasty on brushes. But what you can do is you can save your old brushes for this kind of work. And I'm just scrubbing here. And the effect that you're getting is a nice kind of dusty effect. On this and that's worked quite nicely on the front of that as well. So I'm going to press some of that. That's pr I'm pretty happy with how that's going. So I'll go over to the other side, work it in here, but just do all that brown area uh, with this sort of dusty stippled effect. And that's pretty much just a shab t bone. That's all I'm going to use. There's no other colors I need to introduce for that. And that'll get that done nicely. So I'm going to press on and get this done. All right, so uh, that's done. I've been practicing and working on this kind of effect across here. It is sort of very noticeable. Um, if I take you to some artwork here, this is one of the scale models, and you can see it uh, on here and on here. It's one of the things that really sticks out on this model. I, I don't want to skip that, that's an important sort of feature right, of this one. So, let's go back in here. That's the stippling effect just there, so that's dried off nicely, it's just dry as pretty much as soon as it goes on, but uh, that just knocks the tone of that down. Uh, the next stage is this effect here, I've been practicing, I'm happy enough with that. So the colour that you're going to use for this, there's multiple levels to it here, you've got this initial um, uh, burn across here with the black, uh, we'll fill in these ports here for the missiles, and after that, there's some chipping effects to add on, like you can see here which will come later on, but for now I just want to try and knock that colour down. So what we're doing is using uh, the Contrast Black Templar Add and going for that kind of result. So it's not easy, bit of practice, bit of uh, control with the style here. So what we're doing is we're taking 
uh, a brush and we're just going to use the brush strokes to work our way down uh, in this direction that's to create the effect that you can see there so uh, I want to scrub the brush around the opening the rim first of all we'll fill that in later on with as much contrast as we need so I'm going to put that on roughly like so then use my finger to blend and scrub it in for kind of a rough finish because it's you know sort of the the smoke and stuff that's come out of this so it looks something like that then with not too much on the brush with a medium amount of contrast uh, I'm just going to start putting the brush in this direction now when you hit this piece of frame bit of plastic across it will knock the brush uh, in different directions to so be aware of that so I'm just going to hit it just very carefully I want to just go straight back is what I'm aiming to do now with these brush strokes so so far so good and you can see the direction of a brush always just kind of crossing that direction I can use my finger again to blend a little bit so far this is looking okay If you really make a big, big mess, quickly move to some water, scrub it in, wipe it clean and start again when it's dry. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be pretty much permanent on the on the model. And these do stretch a fair way back. So I'm just going to keep going to about there. Be enough with that. Might try and take a little bit of the strength of it away just by running my finger across. Looks all right. Move on to the next one. So I'm going to do the edge. Like so. Just with the edge of my brush. Because I want that quite darkened because I'll be uh, putting a chipping effect on that. So the, the darker tone on there will help make that stand out. Put a bit more on. To that opening. Can use my finger just to scrub it out, make it look as natural as possible. Can add a bit more to this one. And again, scrub straight back. So I'm going dead straight back. Yeah, it's a fair bit of contrast on the brush. So you can see it coming through quite strong. I'm going to use my finger to work this making sure my, even my finger strokes are in the same direction the contrast is quite good to work it works well this stuff that's just blending in quite nicely so it's coming along quite well happy enough with that This is all being done uh, without a airbrush. Airbrush is great, but it does look airbrushed. It has the airbrushed feel to it, so sometimes it's preferable. Let's go for more of a natural, rougher kind of look. Like so. A little bit of contrast, not too much. And again, I'm going to start working in this direction. This one bleeds all the way back and onto the stippled brown that we've done. So I'm going to run it right the way back here. See, that's quite strong. So I'm going to start using my finger just to start blending and sort of smearing it back again, just keeping the, even the finger strokes going back in this direction. Yeah, happy enough with that. I'm going to really blend it now by... Just working it in so we're looking at a result like that that's sad happy enough with that one so and after that you can strengthen this by doing a second coat same process but just not going back as far this is drying off quite quick so that's going on quite strong so i'm going to use the same kind of process here just to tone that down and blend it in to this and again just smear it in using the finger that around here as well so 
like so. And then just heading back. Again, to strengthen that. And again, just to strengthen this. So, so, then once that's done, I, I just fill this in entirely, add it with the Agrax Earth Shade, so I push the brush right in there. I'm not going to paint any details inside that, just black it out. And make sure I get all of it, and run right up to the edge, and just fill it in nicely, flood that nicely with the uh, Black Templar. So we get a result looking something like that. Like so. Yep, really happy with that. So I'm going to press on. I'll fill the rest of these in, and that's going to be that effect. That dump. All right, so we've got a result looking something like this. With that finished off, really have blacked out and filled out the ports there for the missiles. And we've got a result like that. It's a significant part of the model, one of those outstanding features for it. Next thing we'll do, something completely different. Uh, we'll go for this jewel here uh, that's just... Here, this sighting optical equipment. See if I can zoom in. Yeah, okay. So I wanna paint two thirds of it with the red. And that's gonna be the bottom right hand corner and around. Just going straight on with this red. This is the Evil Sun's Scarlet. So what you should see is about two thirds of it for the right hand side uh, and across filled out with the red leaving the top left hand corner dark then once that's dry I'm going to take a dot on the tip of my brush of ceramite white and in that dry top left hand corner I'm going to put a single dot in that if I can it's just too much white on the brush here so I'm just going to take a bit off single dot just there like so next bit's the orange but I've got to let that red dry so let that dry first of all so then I'm taking the troll slayer orange I want to paint the bottom right hand corner uh, just sort of a crescent shape but leaving some of the red Going around something like that, and that just really lifts it. It's a nice glint to that. Uh, easy way to do gems. So uh, that's that finish that's picked out nicely. The only thing left to do is I'm gonna come back to the silver later on just to pick out the, the frame of that again, just to make that stand out with the silver. But that's the gem and sighting equipment done. And if you're running, uh, say you're painting up lean rushes, for example, you're probably gonna find there's more sighting equipment. So anywhere there's gems, vision slits, uh, screens, and so on, then that's your color you're gonna use in the same process. Uh, for any type of uh, that kind of stuff that comes up, just follow that same process. Right, so our tank's coming along really well. Uh, it's now sort of looking like this. So, uh, just looking pretty good. And it's starting to match up quite nicely with one that's already been done. Uh, and again, it's sort of battlefield ready. The next stage is time consuming. It's 100% worth doing. Right, and that's your shading. So the main bodywork has been done. If I zoom in here, main bodywork's been done. You've got nice colours, uh, shading all done here, darker tones here, lighter tones on top. So a lot of that work's done. So you don't have to paint over all the bodywork. But at the same time, I want to do some nice shading work uh, that you can see like here. So you see all of this. That's just going to be done by hand with a fine brush. And so we'll start off that process. I'm using Skeleton Horde contrast paint and I'm going to use a nice fine brush for this one it's worth being really neat a fine brush uh, it is a really good idea I think this is a double O a really nice tip to it and then just gonna it's all marked out for you you just following the lines and the rivets and filling them in with this wash so I'll go around the rivet just flood it around and that's pretty much all you're doing so I'm gonna go around the entire model yep it's gonna take a while 
but you just keep going, keep making progress with it. It's 100% worth doing if you really want to go for the fine detail, uh, the best kind of finish, then I recommend that you do this. Like so. So I'm making progress there. If you make a mistake, you can use your finger just to scrub out and clean it up. Uh, you can do add some wear and tear on this, like directional strokes. So add along edges like this. So I'm just going to run uh, the brush like that. Not over the whole thing, but on some parts. I might then use my finger just to scrub it out a little bit, just to blend it in. We'll do one across here just to show you. something like that and again I'll use my finger just to scrub it out you're just trying to make it look nice and natural looking and it's a, you know it's a battle-worn uh, tank so that's the kind of idea uh, I'm gonna go around these items here these little bits that stick out so as you can go around the whole thing like this and just scrub over and then you'll, you'll Flick off any extra that's gone on top and just help to pick out the highlight on that. And that's all you're doing. Working your way around. So I'm going to go around all of this, all of this, the main body work and so on. Uh, as you can see on, on here, we've got some directional strokes come back off some of the rivets and the body work. Uh, down here where it's griming, I've been using the artwork as a reference. It's going to kick up more dirt and dust. So I've flicked a fair bit up across here as well. And you're creating a nice area for your chipping and rust or your, your, your metal chipping to come in later on. Um, and that's pretty much it really uh, so I'll go around the whole vehicle this is the finished vehicle so it'll give you an idea uh, of the effect that you can do but it's 100% worth doing it will take you a bit of time uh, but it's so so effective so I'll go and do that across the whole of the model all right so that's done so looking at something like this now for the finish uh, with this I've started work on the silver I'm going to show you how to do that next the next sort of chipping uh, and effect that you can do uh, but that's the uh, the wash put on. So skeleton horde contrast paint. I've used a fine brush uh, for all of this. Uh, even the larger strokes across here, that's all been done with a fine brush. So bring the, uh, the, the brush across. Uh, and then if it's too strong, just using the finger, but uh, making sure you're going sort of the same direction as those brush strokes as well, just to uh, smudge and merge it all in. Uh, but that's the kind of effect that's been achieved around there. I did do the back part here. That's been done, uh, but not underneath. There's no need to, to do work on, on there at all. Some people like to paint the underneath of their tanks. I used to, but don't bother anymore. Uh, if you want to make it look a bit more realistic, you could run the wash all the way across that just to muddy it and make it look a bit more uh, natural looking. And uh, there's the turret across there, so working into all the nooks and crannies and uh, doing the just a, an effect like that across there and then smudging it a little bit. Just sort of directional marks just to show that the, that's the direction the tank's moved. Um, so that's the kind of results you're looking for the colors that we've got going on here this wash just goes on really nice it shades it up really good it's not too strong uh, it just picks out the detail uh, if I line up so that's without the wash this one here this one's without the washes quite stark and plain looking and then when you put the wash on it goes to that it's 10 times more realistic it's well worth doing it's taken me I would say about an hour so it's not too bad, um, and that's the results that's been achieved. So next is the silver effect. Maybe you can see it just across here. Again, this process, I used to take ages doing the chipping effect by brush, but we're going to use something else, uh, and it's going to take minutes and it's going to save you a heap of time. So for this one, instead of brush, uh, we're going to use uh, just a piece of sponge. So a bit of sponge, actually, from a, I think it was a Games Workshop kit. A nice bit of sponge across there. You can break it up a little bit just to take the hard edge. It's sort of a nice natural looking edge to it so we break it up take the, the hard edge off uh, we then take our iron breaker which is a medium sort of darker kind of silver which was set off quite nicely against this uh, I'm going to just lift some out of the pot and put onto this palette like so Then it seems you need to use a clean end each time because uh, it does clog up. Unless you wash that, it's going to clog up and it's not going to be as good. So you want it nice and fresh. And it's a case then of just dipping this in and just dabbing it to get the right amount. 
and then very carefully I go in here let's chip up and it's just common sense where you think the chipping would take place this is going to it's pushed through dust stones and bushes and so on so it's going to chip up around this corner so I'm going to use this to dab on some chipping effect and you should be able to see the glint of it there just on the camera uh, I'm going to leave these ducts here we're going to pick those out of a stronger silver and I think I could do a bit more paint on the end of this and you can maybe see so there is obvious that that's come up nice see that and then just here a little bit you've really got to control yourself here it's tempting to to go overboard if you do too much it looks too much it's not good uh, but I might put a little bit just on that even that's too much I'm not I don't want to do any more than that uh, just a small amount main areas you're going for uh, is areas that are going to get bashed about so the front nose of this would get take some hits I think it's a little bit there a little bit along this front part uh, areas like this just general wear and tear uh, the corners any hard corners such as uh, here roll a bit around that this edge here as well I think would take some uh, these edges here quite sort of right angle and harsh they would take a bit of a, a bash I think the hand rails the hand grabs I think would be bashed about a bit and hopefully you're seeing on camera that's picked up a glint of that and that's not taking that's not taking me very long at all I'm moving around this model quite quick the hours and hours I used to spend painting this on by hand but now the sponge gives you that natural look and it's 10 times as quick. So I'm just going to go around the rest of the model. But uh, be warned, do not go over the top of this. Just a little bit. Uh, less is more uh, with this technique. So it comes out looking something like this. Some more chipping around here. A little bit on the bodywork. If I rotate the model around, you can catch the glint of it. Just on camera. Really, really happy if that's come out. Took about another five minutes there to do it. The entire model so if you're painting a load of lehman rosses for example you know you're going to make good progress here and get some great effects done so that's chipped up nicely next little bit you can do uh, is a few little blaster marks where impacts have been made on the vehicle so common sense where you think those hits would come through uh, so if shots are come through you know this direction then you might get an impact across here so for that you are going to use the brush so i would just paint like a an impact mark there uh, and then swipe the brush out from that for like a kind of impact kind of effect like so. So you can do a couple of those and again you don't want to do too many or just do a couple. Because if you go over top over the top it does spoil it. So I'll put one on here. So I just do the brush in a rough kind of circle and then uh, just spread that out in a few different directions rough kind of star kind of effect like so a couple of blast hits that's based on the artwork just where that's the inspiration for that has come from and you can maybe see it uh, here and there's one here there's one here so again there's a few we tried to replicate it and you can see the chipping effect on the original artwork. I think this is the CGI actually from the film, so we're trying to replicate that as closely as possible. You can see the chipping effect across here, uh, the the marks that we've done in the brown with the skeleton hood, and then the chipping effect around the base. So we've tried to replicate that add on on the model, so that we're trying to match up the original as closely as possible. And that's by using some very simple but very fast techniques. So that's that done. That's how the turrets come out. You can see the glint of the chipping effect just there. So, so quick. So, so effective. And I would say, personally, more effective, more realistic than going by brush. So you're saving yourself time and you're getting a better result. So that's that done. I would then take the uh, Stormhost Silver. Now this is your extreme silver highlight. 
and I would use that to catch at a stronger edge. So at the edge of these, I would like to pick out a bit stronger. And I'm gonna do this by brush, there's not much to do, but I'm just gonna do a little bit more around these to make them a bit more pronounced. See that, just a bit stronger. Now I'll do the same for this bit. It's just a lighter, brighter silver. And it's gonna pick this one out a bit more. Just lifts that out, really gives that a nice harsh edge. Like so, I just think it looks really good. And we'll do a bit round here. Just to catch a, catch a bit more glint, uh, glint on that. Like so. And a little bit on that one. Just quite rough and gentle with the brush. Then wherever I've done those impact marks, there's one here, I would put a little bit in the middle of that. Like so, to make that a bit more pronounced. And I've only done a couple of those. So that's about it. There's one on the turret we said we did. Just here. So I'll put a little bit of this in the middle. On there like so. Just to make that stand out a bit more. Okay. Uh, the dabbing technique, by the way, the dabbing technique that we've done here with the silver, I did that to pick out the metalwork across here that we previously shaded uh, with the contrast uh, black templar. So again, just dabbing that, and that's the kind of effect that you can pick up. And again, it's taken no time at all to get that done, and a little bit around the uh, exhaust columns, these turbine things across here, done a bit on there as well. So that's all that is. Let's see that effect that's been achieved. That is uh, the Black Templar contrast on, dried, and then dabbing with the silver, and that's it. That's all the work that's required. And the effects uh, is, is great, it's worked out really well. The other thing, yeah, there's, there's, there's one other thing you need to remember. So the silver that you've already done, and painted, and shaded with the Agrax Earth Shade, and then also the Nolan Oil, you can then pick out the extreme edge of that. So these little bits here, I'll just pick out the extreme end of them. And that just lifts them as well. Perhaps I'll show you on the, the turret here. So maybe leave that, leave that. A little bit of the chipping's gone onto the turret there, but that's fine. I'm gonna catch this extreme edge just here on the very end of the barrel. So this bit, I'm just rotating them all around. Uh, the slits across here, I'm just gonna run the brush along. I think that might come out on camera, you should be able to see that. Like so, roll it over, use the side of the brush. Angle the brush here and catch this very endy bit. And again, just rotate the model around to catch that. Like so, and that just leaves it looking kind of grimy, but you're just picking it out and making it a bit stronger. With that, remember I said about the, the edge for this, being careful not to go onto the gem or the sighting equipment. That just really lifts it out nicely. Brilliant, a little bit on the back. Uh, the antennas here at the back, I'll go across the bit here. And then I like to leave it grimy at sort of the lower part, but the top part I'll use a bit of this. Just flick that along. Even smudging it a little bit. And you can, yeah, you can see that on camera there. Very straightforward. A lot about technique in this video. But again, you imagine painting a load of lemon rushes. Uh, your, your process is, is quick enough that you could just batch paint a few of the models and get for a, a pretty good air, actually. And yet, at the end of it, you're getting a model uh, that looks like it's been very detailed with the painting. So you've got all the shading done chipping effects and so on, little details picked up. It hasn't actually taken you too much time. So happy enough with that. I, I think we're looking at the model pretty much finished. Uh, yeah, I think we've got ourselves a completed model here. So there he is. You know, a bit I've done uh, is just this, the same process uh, here on the edges of these weapons here as well. So you should better see I've picked up just the edges of those as well. Uh, we've got ourselves uh, a complete tank. 
So that's the model. I've attached the base so that it sits up nicely. It really just lifts it up once it's perched on its base just there. The final stage for this, uh, and that's the one I've painted previously, like so. So the two go quite nicely together. My list has actually got four, so as you can see I've started the other two uh, whilst doing this video and hope to finish those off uh, to have four in the list for the game. Uh, three hammerheads and commander long strike here for the using the tower rules uh, to run these on the board but that's the aat uh, tank completed here and as i've said throughout the video transfer this t this technique over onto Ashford of the time space marine army yeah i think a space marine desert type army painted up in this color scheme would look fantastic even down to the infantry power armor the same effects that you see here on this vehicle can be put onto power armor the shading the chipping all of that can be done on power armor, no problem at all. The same brown tones, the same spraying technique. Uh, and you could, if this has taken such a short time to do an entire vehicle, a squad of 10 infantry may not take you too long at all. So uh, you really could apply this technique uh, to power armor armies, uh, Chaos Space Marines, you know, Tau, uh, with their color scheme as well. Uh, you can do something uh, similar. So feel free to uh, take this color scheme and apply it however you wish. Or join me and collect <laughs> a, a, a droid uh, army here, either for Star Wars Legion or to try out in a game of 40k, uh, which is what we're hoping to do. That's the last big, uh, that's the last unit to do for this project. So if I finish these four tanks, that is the droid army complete at 2,000 points. I would love to paint up 20 of these and do an apocalypse, but who knows? We'll have to see what happens uh, in the future. But that's the complete video. Uh, keep looking out for more secret projects, more painting tutorials on the channel. Thanks for watching. Before I go, uh, to finish this off, just a coat of Munitorum Armoured uh, Munitorum Varnish from Games Workshop. It's a light coat of that. That'll seal the whole model in nicely, protect it a bit for you, uh, just to finish the whole thing off. But that's the tutorial. Thanks for watching. And tune in next time.